Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week on The Gray Escape, we're installing a bookcase above the windshield. Let's get into it. I couldn't possibly waste all this valuable space above the windshield, so I went ahead and made a cardboard template, traced it onto a piece of plywood, and cut it out to make the base for a shelving unit. I put the plywood in place and then traced a line so that I could make sure that there wouldn't be any gaps between the base and the wall. And then I went ahead and cut it out with my jigsaw. Uh, unfortunately, there is a beam that goes across here, which is curved. So I had to take a piece of two by four and cut it with a jigsaw to match that curve. Um, as you can see, the back is much lower than the front. So in order to level that, I laid a piece of two by four and a couple of strips of one by in here to make this shelf level. And once I determined that it was level, I went ahead and put some glue on these pieces and laid this shelf in here. Um, so the shelf. is difficult to get in, but it lays flat now. So this is the base upon which I'm going to build my shelving unit. In order to make sure that everything was secure, I pre-drilled some holes and put some different size screws in place to make sure that that 2x4 would never fall off the bottom of the shelf. I then attached the shelf to the wooden beam with some pocket hole screws. I went ahead and cut that out with a jigsaw. That's why it's not perfect. Screwed it down to the metal. And then the screws that you can see here are uh, pocket holes that I used to attach the piece of plywood in. Um, right now, I, uh, I have one bottom piece in here that's secured. This back wall is just FRP board. Um, it is not being held up by anything right now, but there's going to be braces for these shelves that I'm going to put in and the braces should hold that back against the wall. I couldn't see any other way to securely adhere it to uh, this foam that's behind it. Right now I'm working on the top piece that's going to hold these wires up out of the way and I'll show you what I'm doing with that. And the reason that we're over here by the jacuzzi is because I had to steam bend this because it was very warped from getting wet and drying off while leaning up against the wall. So I went ahead and threw it in the jacuzzi for about 15 minutes. And then I clamped it to this curved piece of wood, which is the off cut from that piece that's holding the base for the shelving that I just showed you before. And now it's all clamped up and drying in the sun and hopefully it should maintain that shape. I went ahead and installed this piece using some self-tapping metal screws. They work really great on the ribs of the bus, which is good to know for the future. All right, the top is up. The back of it's still a little bit wavy, but the front of it is perfect. And now I have cut three uh, cardboard templates for where the walls are going to go. And then I'm going to put a shelf in between this side. Yeah, so far so good. I built these shelves out of masonite and just used my circular saw to cut them out and a table saw to cut that rabbit in the sides for the shelf. I never thought that I would be putting this back in the bus, but I'm having a really hard time figuring out how to frame this arched top. So in the interest of hiding all of these ugly corners, I've gone ahead and made a cardboard template and traced it onto the original plastic piece. There's a template over there. And now I'm cutting it out. All right, so I was just getting ready to paint these shelves and then realized that I have these pocket holes here. Uh, so I'm just gonna use this plastic wood to fill them up and then sand them down and then we can go ahead and paint. 
I let the plastic wood dry for 24 hours and then sanded it flat using my orbital sander and some 220 grit sandpaper. I started trying to paint it using this enamel spray paint, which I like because it has a really glossy finish and it dries really hard, but the masonite just kept absorbing it, so I had to switch up my method. I broke out this can of Kills primer that I had laying around. It'll seal the masonite so that paint will stick better. For the final two coats of paint, I used bare urethane alkyd satin enamel, which is a great paint. I can't say enough good things about it. It's real shiny, real easy to clean, and it actually does self-level, so it helps to minimize brush strokes if you do have to paint it on with a brush. I've been working on this cabinet for way too long, and painting it, repainting it, it's not perfect. So as you can see, this wood is bowed here in a couple of places. It's thin plywood and there's nothing back there to attach it to. This here is just an imperfection in the wood that I tried to sand out and couldn't get flat. Over here, I have some paint that got behind the painter's tape that I used. And when I tried to fix it with spray paint, I got this crinkling effect. I can see some snipe here on this piece. And the more I think about it, the more that I realize I'm investing way too much time trying to fix very small imperfections. And at this rate, I'll never get the bus finished. So I think I'm gonna need to learn at many different points throughout this build that I just have to accept almost good enough. So I think I'm gonna move on with the next step here. Start working on the trim. I cleaned off the plastic trim with some simple green and a washcloth, and I let it dry in the sun before putting on a coat of SEM Color Coat in medium gray. This is the same paint that I used for the rest of the trim so that it'll match the bus interior. It covers really well and is very durable, and I usually only have to use one coat. Once it was dry, I installed it with some self-tapping screws and used some leftover vinyl plank flooring to make the shelves look nice and pretty. I then started measuring, cutting, and installing the trim. I used my chop saw for most of the cuts and a nail gun with an air compressor to nail this piece to the plywood base. I also decided to use rosettes here. I usually prefer mitered corners, but I had already put too much work into this and honestly just didn't want to expend the extra effort, especially when I couldn't guarantee that the corners would be perfectly square. In order to trim out the arched top, since I couldn't bend the trim that I had, I decided to make a trim piece using some leftover masonite and the off cut from the plastic piece, since it already had the proper arch. This saved me the trouble of measuring and cutting yet another cardboard template. All right, so I wanted to take this straight trim here and attach it to this curved board to go above my bookcase. And I'm sorry I didn't record it from the beginning because I've been working on it for a little while, but what I did was I pre-drilled these holes to countersink the screws on the back of this curved piece here. And I got screws that I made sure were the right thickness, or length rather, not to go through the thickness of both pieces here. And this is my, uh, my trim. Now it is thin enough to bend, but it takes a lot of pressure, so I drilled a lot of holes. Um, so basically the way that I did this was I started with the center hole, and I take this and press it up against the side of my workbench in order to align it. So um, as you can see, this is not quite aligned, but if I put it over the edge of my workbench, I can push it and push it into alignment and then stick the screw in. So that is how I've been creating a curve. I just did uh, the middle one and then I moved on to this one and then this one and then this one and then this one and just kept working out from the center. Um, and as you can see, I'm getting it to curve. 
I also put some wood glue on the back, so I hope that it stays and doesn't break, but only time will tell. I also pre-drilled and countersunk holes in the front of this piece so that I could use those metal self-tapping screws to install this to the beam. And then to cover up my mess, I used my nail gun and air compressor to nail the other trim piece on the top. I know that this may or may not hold, but it was worth a shot and it's the best way to cover up those unsightly holes. And here I'm just cutting some more trim for the front of the interior shelves. I wanted this trim to be a little bit thinner than the outer trim so that it wouldn't take up so much visual space. Just like before, I filled all of the holes with wood putty and then sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper by hand this time. I went over everything with a damp cloth to remove as much sawdust as possible, and then moved on to paint. So I made kind of a dumb mistake. I forgot that the uh, masonite that I used for the shelves can't really be spray painted. Um, it would take about a million coats and it just sucks up the spray paint. So I wound up having to use uh, Alkid paint. I'll show it to you. This is bare urethane Alkid satin enamel. This is what I used on my kitchen cabinets inside my house. Um, and it's really good stuff. Uh, nice and shiny, looks good, uh, but I have to brush it on. And because I already had put spray paint on it, it's leaving brush strokes, which I'm not thrilled about. So I'm gonna have to let it dry, maybe sand a couple spots and go over the whole thing with the Alkid because I don't think you can see it on here, but this white is different than this white. A little bit different. So I'm really ready to be done with this thing. It's taken me way too long. It looks awesome, but, uh, Man, am I sick of it. So hopefully I can get it finished today, but I gotta let this stuff dry for a couple hours first. So I guess I'm gonna go kill some time. I wound up getting caught up in another project and let the shelves dry overnight which is good because the spray paint I was trying to use actually has a ridiculously long curing time. And this morning I came back in here, I went over everything with 220 grit sandpaper and put another layer of the Alkid paint on with a paintbrush. There are some brush strokes, there are some drips. I'll be honest guys, there was some contaminants in the paint from uh, sawdust and other things. It doesn't look perfect, but it's all white and I'm just honestly done with it. Not because it's good, but because I've worked too much on it and I've spent too much time and I am just ready to move on to the rest of the bus. So, that's how she looks. And it's not perfect up close, but from far away, it looks awesome. And I'm pretty proud of it. All right, so besides needing to vacuum these out because there are shavings from when I cut the floor in there, it's pretty much done. We've got a lip here. It's not too tall of a lip. We've got a lip up here that's a little bit taller. Try and hold some things in there. Same thing here, a little bit of a lip. So I might, and this is a project for another time because like I said, I am just done with the shelf. I might put some dowel rods, one across here and one across here, 
and maybe one across here. I'm not sure. I'd like to be able to put something tall in there, but if it's like a decorative plant, I may just uh, Velcro it to the flooring there. But I think it looks good from far away. I'll take it. That's all for this week, guys. It was a big project, definitely took a lot of finagling, and I hope that this video is able to help somebody with their build. Thank you all again for being here, and I look forward to seeing you next week on The Gray Escape.